Hello friends and welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton, this is Limitless Life. I was thinking about uh, the other day, I was thinking about a scripture just came back to me, you know, Psalm 27, one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook or what, whatever, Instagram, you may have seen me make mention of this, but when I saw that God is my light and I thought, you know what, God is my light. Now I need to meditate on that a little bit because if God is my light and darkness is all part of the kingdom of the devil, light dispels darkness. So no matter what the devil tries to do against me, it's dark. It's part of darkness. But God is my light. So all I've got to do is take God's word, do like Jesus did, speak, it is written, and release the light of God's word into every situation, physically, financially, emotionally, maritally, every way. It'll release God's word into those situations and I release light and light dispels darkness. That is what James 4, 7 is talking about. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and then the devil will flee. You can just walk right through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. Hallelujah. Anyway, that's good stuff. I just want to share that for, with you before we get into actually what we're, what, what we're actually talking about right now. We're actually doing a series that um, we started 11 weeks ago. Today, we'll complete 11 weeks. So uh, we're in, this will be our 55th program. We've done 54 programs before this. It's a three-part series, part A, part B, and part C. I call it the A, B, C's of true Christianity. Part A is what God has made you. Part B is what God has given you. Part C is what God has called you to do. Uh, you could say it this way. Part A is who you are in Christ. Part B is what you have in Christ. And part C is what you can do in Christ uh, because you're in Him. Uh, so the first six weeks uh, was part A. We covered 23 things, actually, 23 things that God says you already are. Or, yeah, you already are. He's already made you. And then the last uh, five weeks now, ending today will be five weeks, uh, we've actually been covering part B of the three-part series, and that's what God has given you. Um, and so we're going to continue that today. The foundation text in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. And so I told you that at least twice a week, I did it Monday of this week, but I haven't done it since, so I'm going to do it again. At least twice a week, I'm going to remind you of what God has already made you. In other words, who you really are. Number one, you are an eternal being a spirit being created in God's image and likeness. He created you in His class of being, a God class of being right below Him. Number two, God made you one of His immediate family. You are a child and offspring of God Almighty, one of His very own sons or daughters, part of the beloved family of God. Number three, God has made you His servant. You are a servant of God, a servant of Jesus Christ. You have received Freely you are to give, you are to serve Jesus to the world. Number four, God has made you His friend. You are a friend of God, and we found out the scripture said a best friend, a dearly beloved, close friend. Uh, so you're, you're a real dear friend to God. Number five, God has made you an heir of His. You're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Remember, that means a participant. You get to participate in all the blessings of heaven, just like God and Jesus. Number six, God has made you righteous with His righteousness. Not based on anything you have done, not, not your performance or lack thereof. God has made you righteous with His righteousness. Number seven, God has made you part of His A-team. He has made you a chosen one. Hand-picked, hand-selected, you're the best of your kind, you're the best of your class. Wow. Number eight, you are God's representative and ambassador of His government. You have the highest rank and you have God backing you up with all of His power. Wow. God's made you a part of an ambassador of His government. There is no higher government. No government in the, in the, on planet earth is as high as the government that you're an ambassador for. Heaven's government. Um, number nine, God has made you an anointed one. Just like this is my anointed son Jesus. Now he talks about, about you, my anointed daughter, my anointed son. He's made you an anointed one just like he did Jesus. 
Number 10, God has made you a love being. Didn't just put His love in you, but He's made you a love being. Number 11, God has made you the redeemed. That's why you can say, I am redeemed, because that's what you are. He's made you redeemed. Number 12, God has made you royalty. You're part of the highest royal family in the universe, higher than any royal family on planet Earth. Number 13, God has made you holy. That's pretty cool. He's made you holy, but even though you may not be acting holy or think you're holy, God's made you holy. That's why you need to believe Him when He tells you what you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number 14, God has made you His purchased and protected possession. God has made you special. You're His prized possession. That's really good. Number 15, God has made you His temple. He actually lives in you. Number 16, God has made you a light to your world. Number 17, God has made you the salt of the earth. You're salt to people in your world. Number 18, God has made you an overcomer. Number 19, God has made you more than a conqueror. Number 20, God has made you well and whole in your physical body. That's actually what you are. You may not be partaking of it, but you can by grace through faith. God has made you well and whole in your physical body. Number 21, God has made you financially independent of the world system. That was really good. We went, remember, every one of these, we went through a lot of scriptures to prove every one. Number 22, God has made you a soldier in His army. Number 23, God has made you complete in Him. So those 23 things are all part of our three-part series. Those 23 things are part of our A-part series. And then our B-part is what God has given you, what you have in Christ, in other words. And so far, we've talked about, number one, God has given you Jesus. He's given you Himself. Number two, God has given you the same anointing that He gave Jesus. Number three, God has given you Zoe, His very life. God's life is in you. Um, number, wow, boy, these are so good. I'd like to just dwell more of them, but we've, we've got to keep moving. So I've already told you we've got about 40 or 50 parts on this, just this second part of the ABC series. So God has given you a place on His winning team. Uh, that was number four. Uh, wow. God has given you, well, that, that, let me stop there. God has given you a place on his winning team. Actually, he gave you the team, we found out, and God put himself on the team, but he, he said, your, your spot on that team, just like, you know, pre pretend a baseball team and you get become the shortstop or second place, and then somebody along comes along that's better than you and they take your place. God says, no, on this team that he's put you on and he's given you the team, you're irreplaceable. I love that. And then um, number five, God has given you his love. Number six, God has given you the Holy Spirit. Number seven, God has given you His weapons and His armor. And that's the actual one that we were discussing last program. So let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. We found out um, our warfare isn't up in the heavens uh, and up uh, in high places and you know, you need to understand Ephesians. We'll be getting into that in more detail. But uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 shows us where the warfare is. Remember, we found out this warfare is a metaphor. He's not talking about literal warfare here. He's talking about uh, a metaphor of, of the warfare. We found out it's in the mind and you're thinking that's where the warfare is in life if you want to overcome. I have overcome every attack of the enemy the warfare that I've had to fight against Satan, against evil spirits and stuff, I've overcome all of them by renewing my mind and thinking God's thoughts and thinking I can walk in God's ways. Because God's ways and thoughts are higher than man's thoughts and man's ways. But God's Word is what brings man's ways into us and into our thinking and God's thoughts into our thinking so that we can overcome. So look at 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We found out that means they're not of human origin, but they are mighty in God for pulling down, or we found out destroying strongholds. Casting down, verse 5 says, casting down uh, imaginations, King James says, the New King James, arguments, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, 
bringing into cap uh, thought, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So these arguments, these imaginations are all part of the mind. The devil wants to try and get the arguments and, and the mind thinking wrong. So we're arguing against God instead of against the devil. And he wants us imagining wrong things instead of imagining the good things. We should be imagining ourselves healthy in our bodies. We ought to be imagining ourselves debt free and plenty of money to give away. We should be imagining ourselves always living in peace and joy through every storm. Just like Jesus, I'll lay my head on a pillow and take a nap while I'm in the storm. That's how we should imagine ourselves that way because that's what the Word says. Uh, remember this word imagination means reasoning, it means imagination, and it means thought. So, so, and then Thayer's we saw meant a judgment and a decision. So it leads to making judgments, passing judgments, and making decisions, these reasonings, these imaginations, these thoughts. And so we found out the, the brain, the, the battleground, the battlefield, the place of the warfare is our thought realm, is our thinking, our intellect, our minds. Verse 4 says, though, that we use what kind of weapons? Not, not natural, supernatural. These are God weapons. In fact, I was looking at this Greek word weapons and I saw it used in some other places, but in a couple of the other places, it wasn't translated weapons. It was translated armor. Hmm. So the armor of our warfare and the weapons, you can translate it both ways. Like, for example, if you're taking notes, I'm not going to turn there, but if you want to write it down, Romans 13, 12 says, put on the armor of light. That word armor is the same word here that we're seeing uh, the weapons of our warfare. So if the weapons of our warfare can be translated weapons, then when you go to Romans 13, 12 and it says, put on the armor of light, then you could say, put on the weapons of of light. Isn't that good? And then also in 2 Corinthians 6, 7, the armor, it talks about the armor of righteousness. That's the same word we're looking at here as weapons, the weapons of our warfare. So when I thought about that, I thought, so righteousness is armor, breastplate of righteousness. But guess what? It's also the, the weapon of righteousness. Oh man, I can use righteousness, boy, <laughs> against the devil. Man, this is cool. So we're talking about this, this seventh thing on our list of what God has given you. He has given you supernatural weapons and supernatural armor. Our weapons, our armor are not of human origin. They are not natural. They are supernatural. They are eternal. They are God weapons. They are God armor. They are God's word, God's faith, God's spirit. Those are all part of our weapons to bring thoughts and imaginations captive. Therefore, we use God's word spoken out of our mouths to replace wrong thoughts. We bring those thoughts into captivity. Notice bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That word obedience in the Greek means submission. So if the devil's trying to get me to think wrong, I call it stinking thinking. If he's trying to get me to think wrong, I am going to take the word and I'm going to cause that word to submit. You submit. You bow your knee. Get out of my thinking. You know, submission, when you see this word uh, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience and it means submission, when I see that, I think about the, the verses that say every tongue or every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow. That's submission. Praise God. And that's the kind of submission it's talking about you and I are supposed to take over thoughts that don't line up with, uh, with Jesus and with the Word of God. So we are to use the spoken Word of God to make our thoughts and make our imaginations line up with what? You say the Word, but I'm going to say it this way, with Jesus because Jesus and the Word of, are, are one. What did Jesus do when the devil tried to get Jesus to imagine himself uh, being thrown off the pinnacle of the temple? Remember when he tempted him on that one? Uh, throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. 
And, you know, God, God will give his angels charge over you, so nothing's going to happen. Just go ahead and throw you. So, so when those imagination, when that thought come, what did Jesus say? It is written. What did he do? He spoke the word of God. And it's worth noting here that the devil even used Scripture to try and get Jesus to imagine or to think wrong in order to act wrong. Hmm. And that shows us that if, if we're not on our guard, then the devil can use Scripture and then we can use Scripture not rightly divided, because obviously when the devil quoted the Scripture, it wasn't being rightly divided. So if we're not on our guard, then we can use Scripture against ourselves that will actually build strongholds Castle, remember this word strongholds means castles or fortified walls. So we can get these castles, these fortified walls, these wrong ways of thinking in our minds that will keep us from working or operating in the blessings of God. If we don't understand Scripture, in other words, Satan will use Scripture against us. He obviously tried to against Jesus, not knowing if Jesus would... Well, this is a, a scripture, so Jesus is the word. Surely he'll obey the scripture. He was trying to get Jesus to imagine doing wrong. So that tells me something. If scripture is causing you, because I've heard, I've heard people say this, so listen to what I'm about to say. If scripture that you hear is causing you to feel discouraged, or scripture is feeling, uh, causing you, somebody's preaching a, a message with scripture, and, is, and you're feeling unworthy, or you're hearing a scripture that is causing you to all of a sudden panic or get in fear or, or maybe be, feel condemned, or if you're hearing scripture that would cause you to accept sickness in your body, or if you're hearing scripture that would cause you to accept uh, or succumb to financial lack, then you should know right now, and I'm telling you right now, that those scriptures are being used of the devil then you should take other scripture that declares victory, that declares healing, that declares peace, joy, prosperity, and you ought to take those scriptures and speak, it is written. Years ago, the Lord told me, he said, if, if there's scripture you don't understand, the devil's going to try and use it against you. So if there's scriptures you don't understand when you read my word, he said, just put them on the shelf. When, when, when people try and use it or the devil tries to use it and you don't understand it, don't let it sway you and get you imagining thinking wrong. Just put it on the shelf. He said, and then the scriptures that you do know, such as, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Such as, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Such as, Jesus bore my sicknesses. I mean, just uh, scriptures that you know the devil can't use them against you. If you know them, he can't use them against you. So if you're feeling some of these feelings that I just mentioned with Scripture, then that means it's the devil trying to use those Scriptures. So go ahead and just go back to Scripture. You know, put those Scriptures on the shelf. Don't let them be used against you. And just go ahead and start meditating and dwelling on what is written. It is written. In fact, go back, look at 2 Corinthians 10, 5, the verse we've been looking at, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Um, and you do that. You bring thoughts into captivity by replacing thoughts with God's thoughts, with God's Word. And you replace thoughts with words. You don't replace thoughts with other thoughts unless you get them out of your mouth and get them thinking. In other words, uh, God's thoughts are creative and, and so they will create the thoughts when you speak them, but you don't replace a thought with another thought. Remember when the, when the devil put these thoughts in Jesus' mind? D Jesus didn't just stop and say, okay, I'm going to think differently. I'm going to think differently. I'm going to think differently. He didn't re try and place, replace thoughts with thoughts. He replaced thoughts with words. It is written. We're talking about our number seven thing here, that God has given you supernatural weapons and supernatural armor, but we have to use them. 
Go over to Ephesians chapter 6 with me real quick. Ephesians chapter 6. And let's start reading in verse 10 about being strong in, our, in the Lord, not in ourselves, not in the power of our might. We're talking about God's given us supernatural weapons, supernatural armor. Finally, brethren, Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. This is God's armor and God's weapons. Put it on that you may be able to stand against the trickery or wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual orders of darkness in this age, spiritual weakness in high places. Remember, we already found out if you let Scripture interpret Scripture, we've just found out in 2 Corinthians, this wrestling, you know where it takes place? Not up in the heavenlies. This takes place. Even though there may be spiritual weakness in heavenly places, the, the battle is in the mind. And so all of these different, these different aspects of, of the devil's kingdom, which are all defeated, by the way, all underneath your feet, by the way, he's put all these under your feet. Um, and he said that back in Ephesians 1. So now he's in Ephesians 6. He's expecting you to remember that. All of them are underneath your feet. And so you're, you're wrestling against them. You're not wrestling against people, flesh and blood. You're wrestling against these things. But the wrestling's in the mind because you're already an overcomer. You're already in Christ. You're already seated with Him in heavenly places. And so you're far above all principality and power, might, and dominion, and every name this name. So therefore, verse 13, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. It doesn't say having done all fight. It says stand. It doesn't say having done all to wrestle, wrestle. No, it says stand. Stand therefore, verse 14, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith which, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer. So, notice verse 11. I want you to, this is what I came here for, verse 11. It says, Put on. You need to circle that, underline it, highlight it. I want you to see these two words, put on, which indicates there is something that you have to do. If you don't put on, they're not going to be used. These are weapons. They're supernatural weapons and armor, but you have to put on the weapons and armor that God gives you. And it's part, and you're, you do that by faith because these weapons are part of His grace. All right? Our faith gives us access into God's grace. Let me show you Second Corinthians. I mean, uh, uh, Second Roman, Romans five verse two. I should try to say second verse. <laughs> the second verse of Romans five is what I was trying to say. So Romans five one and two. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into the grace that we stand in and reign and rejoice in hope in the glory of God. So we got saved by His grace, and that, according to this, put us in His grace. Remember that word grace also means favor. So I am in God. I have God's favor. I'm in God's favor. I'm in God's grace. And I'm standing, this verse says, I'm standing in that favor and standing in that grace. Wow. Now our faith that God has given each of us gives us access. That word access means admission. <laughs> I remember going into a buffet restaurant. If you've been into a buffet restaurant, you can relate to this. I went into this buffet restaurant. Man had all of the food, all of the, the starter foods, you know, that you would call soups and salads, and then all of the regular, you would call regular menus, all the meats and the vegetables and all the different stuff, and then the, uh, the uh, condiment bar, and then the, uh, the dessert bar. If you're into dessert, you'd go. And I'm telling you, when you, when you paid your admission, you had access to everything. That's what, that's what this word means right here, that God, has, God gives you access. He is letting you know you have now 
gotten the golden ticket, <laughs> the golden buzzer was pushed, man, you've gotten the golden ticket, you're on your way to all of God's blessings. They all belong to you now. You're not having to go to Hollywood. You're going to Jesus Wood, man. He, he, Jesus got on a piece of wood and put you access into all of heaven. And now you have access, you have admission to the buffet restaurant of heaven. But we have to use our faith we have to use the armor and the weapons that God has given us freely by His grace. And that is how you do what this verse says, put on or use the weapons that God's armor has given you. And we're going to discuss these pieces of armor here in Ephesians a whole lot more in a whole lot more detail later on in this series. So we'll, uh, we'll pick this back up next program. But we're out of time again, as usual. <laughs> we're always running out of time. So thank you for joining us. Uh, man, what God has given you, what He's made you, what He's given you, and what you can do is the three-part series. We're still in part two of the, or part B of the series right now. ABCs of True Christianity. I love it. I'm sure you're enjoying it. Make sure you please share it with others. Please share as much as you can on social media these, these messages. They'll change people's lives. Till next time, we love you, call you blessed, have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to larryhutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Do you know yourself, who you really are? Not the natural, carnal person that the world says you are, but the saved, word-filled, Holy Spirit-empowered believer that you really are in the eyes of God. At times, each of us has struggled with our identity, ability, and purpose in our lives as believers. But God's Word is filled with His descriptions of who you really are in Him. In this two-part scripture recording, you will hear Dr. Hutton quote all the Bible scriptures about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what you can do in Christ. In Him Scriptures will help you build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith, enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do, not in your own power, but in Him. To order In Him Scriptures, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.